Naimbag nga daw kada kayo amin. Good day to everyone. Welcome back to Mom Shi Jen Channel. Real Talk. Today, ang pag-uusapan po natin is very special because our guest is also special. We're going to have a fun game with him and we're going to discover the life of a person we missed so much. He hasn't been in the public sight for almost three years and now he is back. The longest serving mayor of Baguio City, Attorney Mauricio Dumogan. Good afternoon po, sir. Naimbag nga malim tayo, anak nga, Jeannie. Good afternoon to all of you, beloved people of Baguio, and to all the viewers of this uh, television station. Uh, good afternoon again. Uh, so, belated happy birthday po, Uncle Morris. In fact, meron po akong regalo sa inyo. Ay, thank Ayan. you, thank you. Na. Pero, sir... <laughs> Meron tayong konting laro. Bago ko po ibigay yung regalo ko sa inyo, it's your 75th birthday. birthday. Ayan sir, magsisimula po yung ating interview with a very special gift. This is what we call the mystery gift box. Hulaan niyo po kung anong laman yan. This is very close to you. Favorite niyo po ito sir. Dahil <laughs> nag-interview po ako at nag-research ako. <laughs> Pag nahulaan nyo po, ibibigay ko sa inyo. Pero pag di nyo nahulaan, ibibigay ko po sa mga viewers natin dyan na makakabigay ng tamang sagot dyan sa comment down below. <laughs> Sir Maurice, yes. ano po sa tingin nyo ito? Paborito nyo po ito at bigyan ko kayo ng clue. Matamis. Well, uh, of course, matamis. Di chocolate. Correct. Yeah. Oh. Anong klaseng chocolate? It might be seen. Mm -hmm. It's especially the box that they oh. give nila from the state, mm -hmm. as usual. Okay. <laughs> so, cease ang guest ni Sir. So, tignan natin at the end of the, this program kung tama po ang sagot ni Sir Morris. Pag hindi, oh, tignan natin kung sinong nangangailangan sa inyo, ibibigay ko sa inyo ito. <laughs> <laughs> Kamusta na po kayo? <laughs> okay naman, yeah. I became active in my law practice. Mm -hmm. uh, marami pa rin yung... Uh, Sa atin. Mm -hmm. so, um, speaking of that, why do you continue to do public service? Well, it's just part of our happiness, whether in government mm -hmm. or in the private sector. Because mm -hmm. if you look at where I came from, mm -hmm. actually I came from the wilderness. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to know, yeah. your childhood story. Uh, orphan at an early age. Mm -hmm. I was two years old. My sister was five days old when we were orphaned in a very remote uh, city of Pachacan, Angakidin at the time, Ilocosur, mm -hmm. boundary of Tubo Abra in Bisao Mountain mm -hmm. Province. Iniwanan kami ng aming papa to look for a job to help us survive. Naiwan ako sa aking grandfather, aunt, and an uncle. Yung aking kapatid, akala nila mamamatay. Wala namang gatas na mabibili mo. During the time I was told in our place, they had been transferring her to a breastfeeding mother, willing to share her milk. Until it came to a point na hindi na nagdididi. So... Mabuti na lang an uncle and an aunt from Basao Mountain Province came to our place and got her walking 21 hours to Sagada Orphanage where she stayed with the blessings of the Lord. She survived. You know, there's one thing that it forced my tears to come out if I recall my aunt telling me na you know, bringing my sister to Sagada, Sagada from our own city, as if as somebody was following them. When they will look, there was none. The place where we are is far from Sagada, so we have, they have no recourse. With the difficulty of life, they have to leave her in the orphanage. But when my aunt uh, 
goes back. Sabi daw yung attendant nurse, may pumalit sa inyo na talagang she loves very well the, the baby. She keeps on holding the baby. Then my aunt, of course, answered them, said, impossible. We are coming from a very far place. No one had uh, come to replace me. What's the look of that uh, woman that you said that you replaced me? When they will describe that woman, mm. it was our dead mother. Mm. It was our dead mother. So we did not live together as brothers and sisters. Mm. I think she was three years old when she was taken also by our grandmother on my father's side in Basau. Well, with God's uh, help, I was able to graduate at the top of my class, 1961, and followed my father in Lipanto because he was taken in as a laborer of Lipanto. I had already a stepmother at that time. It's so difficult sometimes to live with that situation. My sister also, when she graduated elementary in Busau, mm -hmm. followed me. That's the first time that we lived, mm -hmm. uh, lived together. I graduated the uh, high school 1965 mm -hmm. then at that time. There is an unforgettable memory that I have. Mm -hmm. That was February 14 of 1965, Junior Seniors from Valentine's Day. Uh, yes, <laughs> the, of the high school. It was the compulsory for us to attend. On it, nire require kami na either barong Tagalog or Trubinais with necktie and dark. Uh, long pants hmm. and a black shoes. Wala ka naman akong barong Tagalog. Wala naman akong dark uh, pants na mahaba. I had only one medium long pants just below my knee. And the only shoes available that I can use was the only shoes of my father, which is a bulldog shoes. So, fortunately, a neighbor of ours, adjacent room, because mm. we are living in a bang house, lent me his Barong Tagalog, but he is a big guy. That's why the Barong Tagalog is too long for me. But in order to attend the junior seniors from, I had to do it. When I wore the big Barong Tagalog and with that bulldog shoes and a short dark pant uh, just below my knee, I look worse than a king koi that we see in the comics. So, of course, the male line up in one line, the female on the other side. And the dignitaries in front, then you march. Whoever is the lady who will happen to be, meet you there is your partner. Of course, the instruction is for you to put your left forearm, your ano, and then the lady is supposed to put her also hand on your hands. But you know, when I meet that lady, a classmate of mine who happens to be the daughter of the uh, ship boss of the power department of Lipanto. Mm -hmm. Then she looks at me and then, uh, well, I do not blame her. Uh, maybe I was so dirty as she looked. Only her two fingernails and she was too far away from me doing like that. And then everybody in front stood up and laughed at us, you know. Mm. That was the rare instance that I feel the feeling of a son of a poor family. So when we were able to move forward, she removed her hands and I ran away outside. 
I can remember three classmates of mine who pitied me and who followed me. But I can't anymore hold my tears. The embarrassment is happened, convincing me to go back. I said, no. But you know, after that, what came to my mind was, What will I do in order that my classmates will uh, at least remember that there is Maurice Dumogan who is their classmate? I cannot equal them the way they dress, uh, the way they, have, they wear their shoes. Then what came to my mind was I have to study well. Mm. Deep in me, I have to study well so that in any quiz, recitation, I have to defeat that lady who had done that to me February 14 of 1965. <laughs> That's what I keep on doing. Mm -hmm. Without me knowing, it was helping me. Mm -hmm. Well, I graduated high school. I came to Baguio for the first time to pursue my college education. We were able to locate a boarding house in a squatter's house along the creek, Holy Ghost proper, without light, without water. At least the rental was five pesos a month. Oh, 1965. Which, 1965, mm. which I, that's what I can afford. Mm. So that's where I stayed, that's where I stayed. I can remember those days that you know, again, talking of chocolate. <laughs> there was that chocolate <laughs> then at the time. Mm. Uh, five centavos, one, uh, one, bar. one bar. I buy that one. I half it, half of it for my breakfast. And then half of it lunch in dinner. That was it. <laughs> Fortunately, I was able to locate distant relatives mm. selling vegetables in the hunger market. I was looking at the cabbages and other vegetables that they have been removing some of the leaves uh, to eat. And I look at it. It can still be edible. So I played with them. Please do not throw what you are removing, uh, some of the leaves of the cabbages and the pit side. I will come and get it after my classes. That's what I had been doing. Then, fortunately, I was taken in as member of the Rondalia band. So, I was free in my tuition fee. I was only paying six pesos and 50 centavos per semester as miscellaneous fee. Mm. That was uh, my situation at the time. And during summer, well, I do my best to look for whatever available job, or I help my uh, grand uh, grandfather and an uncle in, of course, plowing the field. So I, he was able to be taught by my grandfather how to hold, uh, how to plow and prepare the field for, uh, of course, rice uh, planting during summer vacations. And I'd been working in Lipanto, so I, I work as a road gang, Kamaniro, Tikalsada. Then one summer, three months, I work as this was the hardest job that I had at that time. I worked pion in the construction of the gold mill of Lipanto. There was no transit mixer at the time, so mm -hmm. it's all manual. Ikewar mm muti -hmm. pati panag saminto, nagrigat, because they tapok the saminto. But I was able to pass those. First time we had a reunion in Lipanto. The reason why I told myself I have to be there 
Wah, itu si dat lidi kudid dat tumi. February 14 of 1965. Amelie, how did you meet your wife? Well, you know, 